Hello, this is Dr. Grande. In today's video, I'm going to be summarizing the 10 personality disorders that we see in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, the DSM. If you find this video to be interesting or helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. That way you won't miss any new videos. So as I mentioned in this video, I'll be summarizing the personality disorders. I have other videos that look at each of these personality disorders in different ways a summary of each personality disorder or specific attributes or characteristics with that personality disorder. So as I mentioned again this is just a summary of all 10. But first let me start with what a personality disorder is in general. So we know from the DSM that a personality disorder is an enduring pattern of inner experience and behavior that deviates from an individual's culture. We also know that personality disorders are pervasive and flexible, tend to have an onset in early adulthood, adolescence, early adulthood. They tend to be stable over time and they do cause distress or impairment. The personality disorders are divided into three clusters, A, B, and C. I'm gonna start with cluster A, then move to B and C, and I'm gonna cover the different personality disorders in each of those clusters. So cluster A is the odd eccentric cluster. It has paranoid, schizoid, and schizotypal personality disorders in it. And this cluster is a little different from the other two in a few ways, but one of the ways is that we relate these different personality disorders to schizophrenia. There are some theories that say that they are related to schizophrenia in the sense that they're on a continuum with it. And there's other theories that suggest that they are quite a bit separate, but sometimes they can lead to schizophrenia. And we do know that in some instances, an individual with one of these personality disorders can go on to develop the symptoms of schizophrenia to meet the full criteria of schizophrenia. So let's take a look first at paranoid personality disorder. Here we see behavior like being suspicious, distrusting people, taking benign remarks, and interpreting those remarks as being threatening, tending to hold grudges, and oftentimes we see here individuals with this disorder have concerns about infidelity. They suspect that their partner is cheating on them. Now moving to schizoid personality disorder. Sometimes this personality disorder is characterized by the term loner. So here we see symptoms like not having any desire to be in interpersonal relationships, even with family members, being solitary, not having interest in sexual experiences with other people, obtaining pleasure in few activities, if any, lacking close friends, being indifferent to praise or criticism, and appearing cold, detached, or having flat affect, so appearing emotionless. Now moving to the last personality disorder here in cluster A, this would be schizotypal. And here we see ideas of reference, odd beliefs, magical thinking, odd behavior or appearance, unusual perceptual distortions, having constricted affect, lacking close friends, and social anxiety due to paranoid fears. So we can see a number of similarities between the personality disorders in cluster A, and it's not unusual if somebody has one of the personality disorders in cluster A that they would have another one or the other two even. So there's a lot of comorbidity between the personality disorders in cluster A, and really this is true for all of the clusters. There's more comorbidity within a certain cluster than we see between the clusters. So now looking at cluster B, this is the dramatic erratic cluster. There are four personality disorders here, antisocial, borderline, histrionic, and narcissistic personality disorders. With antisocial personality disorder, we see symptoms like breaking the laws, disregarding social norms, repeatedly engaging in behaviors that would be grounds for arrest. We see lying, impulsivity, aggressiveness, irresponsibility, a disregard for the safety of others, and lacking remorse. Now moving on to borderline personality disorder, here we see a lot of efforts to avoid abandonment, an unstable sense of self, unstable relationships, impulsivity, suicidal behavior, and self-harm behavior, we also see this feeling of emptiness and a lot of anger. 
Now moving on to histrionic personality disorder. Here we see somebody who's uncomfortable if they're not the center of attention. Individuals with this disorder tend to be sexually seductive and use their physical appearance to attract attention. We also see a shallow expression of emotions, impressionistic speech, exaggerated emotions, and an individual with this disorder is oftentimes suggestible. The last personality disorder here in cluster B is narcissistic personality disorder. And here we see a grandiose sense of importance. Somebody who is preoccupied with unlimited success. Someone who feels that they're special and only special people can understand them. We see a need for excessive admiration, a sense of entitlement, lack of empathy, and the appearance of being arrogant. Now moving on to cluster C. This is the anxious, fearful cluster. There are three personality disorders here, avoidant, dependent, and obsessive compulsive personality disorder, OCPD for short. OCPD is different than obsessive compulsive disorder. Those are two separate disorders. So with avoidant personality disorder, we see symptoms like avoiding occupations because of a fear of criticism, only entering into relationships when there's a certainty of being liked, feeling inept and inferior, not taking risks, again because of a fear of criticism. Also we see with avoidant personality disorders difficulties with intimate relationships and difficulties with new relationships. Now moving on to dependent personality disorder. Here we see difficulty making everyday decisions, having difficulty disagreeing with other individuals, and putting a lot of energy and effort into finding and maintaining support. So here there's a real fear of taking care of oneself. Somebody with dependent personality disorder oftentimes has this fear of being alone and unsupported. The last personality disorder in cluster C is obsessive compulsive personality disorder. Here we see a preoccupation with lists, schedules, order, rules, and organization. We see characteristics like perfectionism, being over devoted to work and productivity, being over conscientious, and being rigid and stubborn. So those are the 10 personality disorders. One of the questions I get about these personality disorders somewhat often is, do they really change over time? Remember, they're supposed to be stable over time, but we do know that sometimes they change. With antisocial personality disorder and borderline personality disorder, in a number of presentations, we see that as an individual grows older, the symptoms tend to lessen in severity, duration, and frequency. And sometimes those personality disorders tend to remit. That's not in most instances, but we see that more often with antisocial and borderline personality disorders than we do with others. Other personality disorders like schizotypal and obsessive compulsive personality disorder tend to be particularly stable over time. Another question I get in relation to personality disorders is which ones tend to affect work productivity more? So a lot of times when we look at personality disorders, we look at the impact they have on somebody's job or career. Of course, the impact on work is highly variable. It depends on the individual. It depends on the particular presentation of the personality disorder. It also depends on if there's more than one personality disorder or mental health disorder present, so comorbidity. But in general, we see a more difficult time with work activities for individuals who have antisocial, paranoid, schizotypal, and borderline personality disorders, and less impairment with OCPD, schizoid, histrionic, and narcissistic personality disorders. The last item I'll cover here in relation to all the personality disorders is this idea of categorical versus dimensional. So there's a debate going on with personality disorders that these categories really don't capture the essence of what's going on and that we should move to a dimensional model, a model that looks at extreme manifestations of certain personality traits to explain the behavior we see with what we now call personality disorders. So this categorical versus dimensional debate goes on and right now of course in the DSM we see a categorical model. So it's important to understand here that there are advantages and disadvantages to each one of these models. So just briefly we know that using the categorical model this is faster 
it's less complex, it doesn't require as much training, but it also tends to be inaccurate. A lot of people in the mental health community, including me, aren't really satisfied with the categorical model, the way the personality disorders are broken down. I know a lot of effort went into this categorization and there's research behind it, but it's just not satisfying. It just doesn't line up with what we see in clinical practice as much as perhaps a dimensional model would. Now again, there are advantages and disadvantages, and we look at the dimensional model, we know that it's complex, it's time consuming, but it also tends to produce a better assessment. So these are factors that have to be weighed as we consider how we classify personality disorders. I hope you found this description of the personality disorders to be interesting. Thanks for watching.